Hey guys, welcome to another video. As I've mentioned in a previous video about all the things that are wrong with my GTI, uh, there's one thing that is really wrong and it's one thing I really want to fix. This is it. So um, I've got the parts ready and uh, here it is. So these coilovers are from Raceland. It's it's a pretty, pretty well-known brand. It's also well-known that it's quite cheap. It's definitely on the cheaper, cheaper end of the coilover family. But I still think they look pretty nice. The main reason why I went with Raceline is just because obviously it's the price. And ooh, this looks really nice. Adjustable dampers um, so that I can play around with it, kind of learn more about kind of what it feels when it's hard, when it's soft, compared to when it's soft, which is really nice. And the other thing is, I mean, this car is a 2009. Um, the, the, the used car price is pretty much tanked, and I don't really want to spend that much money on on a new set of coilovers. As long as it works, as long as it's better than it was before, I'm happy. And this is also going to be my first time doing things on suspension, so. I don't really want to buy something that's super expensive and then mess it up and screw it. So uh, that's the main reason why I went with Raceland. It should be pretty good. There's lo lots of good things said about Racelands and they have a really good like warranty program or something like that. So uh, I'll, link, I'll leave a link down in the description below so you guys can check it out as well. They have coilovers for a lot of different kinds of vehicles. It's not just VWs, they have, they have all kinds. So these are all the parts that I'm going to be installing or replacing. So. These are obviously, these are the suspensions. This set is from Raceland. Uh, it's the one that can adjust dampers. So you can adjust the dampers at the top, like you can see right here. Um, I also got upper mounts for both front and back. That's what these are. I got them from Raceland as well. And I also got some spare nuts and bolts uh, from ECS Tuning, just because the car uh, probably hasn't replaced the suspension stuff for 11 years now. So I thought it'd be a good time to swap those nuts and bolts as well. I'm pretty excited about this one. Like I mentioned in one of the previous videos that, you know, the rear suspension is actually cracked. That's why the rear is a little bit lower than the front. And I've been hearing some weird clunking noises as well. So it's definitely the time to do this job. Um, I have never done this before. Uh, like I said, you know, when I started this channel, everything that I'm doing here, as at least to up till this point, um, is always been the first time. So I've done a lot of research, watched a heck ton of YouTube videos and Try and see if I can do it myself. I mean, worst case, just tow it to a to a to a shop, I guess. So the plan is to do it very very slow. Um, I don't want to rush into it because I've never done this before. I don't want to one. I don't want to hurt myself, and two, I really don't want to screw this up online. It's gonna be really funny if I mess this thing up and really towed it to a dealership. But um, so the first thing is obviously jack the car up, and I am going to be spraying penetrant oil on pretty much all the suspension uh, nuts and bolts because this car has spent eight years in Michigan winter. So a lot of the chassis components are kind of rusty. I'm really, really worried that I'm gonna snap a bolt. I hope I don't. Um, so I'm gonna prepare myself the best way I can to spray penetrant oil and just lubricant all the nuts and bolts, try and make it easier to loosen up. And I'll probably leave it for a couple hours just to let it soak. Um, and then probably spray it every half an hour or so, something like that, and kind of see how it goes. And then we'll start from there. So when you're taking your wheels off, if you own a VW, um, they tend to use bolts instead of nuts so that when you remove the bolt, the wheel is kind of just hanging there um, if you remove all five of them, the wheel sometimes is just going to drop on you. So this is a tool that I highly, highly recommend. I'm not really sure what it's called, but I think it's um, wheel guide or wheel hanger. I'll leave a link down in the description below. It's a real nice tool so that you can remove one bolt first, put this thing in, and then remove the rest so that the wheel will not just suddenly drop. If I don't have this, this is just gonna drop as soon as I remove the last one. So with this hanging right here, it is much easier to take the wheel off. 
Here is just a couple of examples of spraying penetrant oil on some of the nuts and bolts. There's obviously more than two nuts and bolts on the suspension, but here is just some example. So the car has been sitting for a while. I've sprayed penetrant oil on a lot of the nuts and bolts on the suspension components just so that it's a little bit more lubricated so that it's easier to take it off. Um, I, during this waiting time, I've assembled the suspensions. These are the fronts. I uh, put the top hats on and also the rears as well. The rears have the top hats on as well. So it's ready to go. Since these are all done, let's get to the uninstall of the ones that we have right now. We're gonna start by removing the cowl seal. From then on, there's two ways of doing things. You can either just flip the cowl and access the three top strut bolts, or you can remove the wipers first and then remove the cowl. To remove the wiper blades, we need to first remove the cap and then use a 13 millimeter socket to remove the nut. Once the nut is removed, we can apply pressure on the hinge of the blade and kind of just move it back and forth, shake it around and try and remove the blade. After also removing the passenger side of the wiper blade, we can remove the rest of the seal and gently, be very careful right here, pull the cowl upwards and remove the cowl. If your car is equipped with Xenon headlights, which also have the headlight leveling sensors, be very careful on the driver's side, you will have to remove or loosen the headlight level sensor first. This is a very important step because if you don't do this and you just lower your control arm right away, then there's a very good chance you can snap this level sensor in half and you'll have to replace the whole part. Once you loosen the nut underneath the control arm, you'll probably notice that you don't have enough room to move the level sensor away. So in order to have more room to remove the headlight level sensor, we can now loosen the 316mm nut that is underneath the control arm and the ball joint. I recommend just loosen it and not remove it all the way. I mean, as long as you have enough clearance for the headlight level sensor, it should be good. Once we're able to lift the headlight level sensor arms, we can use a zip tie to kind of secure it somewhere so that it's not gonna move around. Next, we're gonna use a 10 millimeter wrench to remove this bracket that is mounted on the steering knuckle. The purpose of this is so that when we drop the wheel hub and control arm, we can allow the brake lines more wiggle room so that it won't just tear apart. I also recommend putting the 10 millimeter back where it is just so that we don't lose it. Make sure you have some kind of support underneath the wheel hub assembly. This is just to make sure that at any point when loosening the suspension, the wheel hub assembly is not just going to smash to the ground. And also make sure not to bend the brake dust shield behind the brake discs. We're gonna spray some more penetrant oil before we loosen the end links. To loosen up the end links, we're gonna be using an 18 millimeter wrench and an M6 triple square socket. Sometimes if it is too hard to remove the nut, we can raise the suspension up a little to release the tension of the end links. We can now start to loosen the three 13 millimeter bolts at the top mount of the suspension. And then the thing that I fear the most has happened. All three of my 16 millimeter top bolts have stripped. So I will have to cut them with the Dremel. Be very patient when doing this because as you can see, I kind of cut through my car a little on the side. 
After hours of cutting and numerous runs to Home Depot for more blades, we can now remove the axle bolts with M10 triple squares and a long, long extension. The reason for this step is to allow more room when removing the stock suspension. Now we're going to be removing the pinch bolt with an 18mm wrench and a M14 triple square. Here is the same bolt just from a different angle. You can see how rusty and disgusting this bolt is, we're definitely going to be replacing this one. To move on to the next step, we need this special tool called a strut spreader. It has a wider end and a thinner end. We're going to be putting this tool in with the wider end on top and bottom and turn it 90 degrees to spread the strut seat. Notice that as I am rotating the tool, the strut seat is also expanding. Now we can finally remove our stock suspension. Spray some more penetrant oil just to make our lives easier and also make sure that there's a jack stand under to support the assembly. And finally, we're able to remove the strut, but at this point, be very careful because there's nothing supporting our wheel hub assembly right now. So move your jack stand or in whatever way you have to, to make sure that the wheel hub is not just gonna move around or drop to the ground and break any lines. Now we can finally put our new coilovers in, but make sure that the end link mount and the alignment pin is pointed towards inside the car. And also make sure that the arrow on top of the strut mount is on the inner side and pointing front and back. Once we are sure that our coilovers have seated properly, we can raise the whole assembly higher and make sure that the three holes on the top mount aligns as well. Next is to install the 13mm bolts on the top, just finger tight for now, but once we have everything together, these three bolts need to be torqued to 11 foot pounds plus 90 degrees. We can also put our axle bolts back together and these need to be torqued to 70 newton meters.
Before putting the lower control arm back, make sure to put the headlight level sensor back first. Next is to install the three 16mm nuts under the control arm and these need to be torqued to 44 foot-pounds. Next is our pinch bolt using our 18mm wrench and M14 triple square. These need to be torqued to 52 foot-pound plus 90 degrees. Install the sway bar end links and torque the nuts to 48 foot-pounds. Place the bracket that holds the brake lines back to its original position. When torquing down these suspension components, the suspension should be under load. We can kind of replicate that by raising the suspension with a jack. I'll be using this pinch bolt as an example and torque it to 52 foot-pounds plus 90 degrees. Adjust your torque wrench to 52 foot-pounds and torque all the way till it reaches that 52 pound limit. Once we have reached 52 foot-pounds, we can use a marker, a sharpie, or paintbrush to mark the bolt so that we can measure and have a visual look at how much the bolt has turned. We now try and turn the bolt 90 degrees so that we can get the 52 foot-pounds plus 90 degrees. Apply some lubricant on the threads of the coilover so that it won't be seized in the future when we want to adjust them. Bow Shield is one of the highly recommended products to do this job. At this point, the installation of the coilovers at the front is pretty much done. I just wanted to raise the suspension all the way to its highest point so that when we lower the car back down, the wheels are not just going to smash into the fenders. Moving to the rear of the suspension, which is way easier than the fronts, the first thing we got to do is similar to the fronts where we have to remove the headlight level sensor. We can now remove the lower control arm bolts with an 18mm wrench and an 18mm socket or in this case an impact wrench. Before we completely take out the bolt, make sure you have a jack stand or some kind of support underneath the control arm because once you've taken this bolt out, the spring will want to push the control arm down. This is the spring that is taken out of my rear suspension, and as you can see, the bottom of the spring has broken in half. Remove the lower strut bolt with 21mm socket. I recommend leaving part of the bolt in so that when we loosen the top bolts, the strut is not just going to fall down. Remove the two top bolts with 13mm sockets. You can see this one is also very rusty and disgusting and will definitely be replaced. Here we have our new rear shock. With a good functioning shock absorber, when you compress it, it's supposed to bounce back to its original position like this. And here we have our rear shock that we've just pulled out. You can see that after I compress the shock, it is not even trying to bounce back to its original position.
we can start putting the new components back in. I recommend putting the rear shocks first because if you put the springs first, then you will have some trouble putting this bolt back in. And this bolt needs to be torqued to 133 foot-pounds. The two upper mount bolts for the rear shocks needs to be torqued to 37 foot-pounds plus 45 degrees. Same as the fronts, we're going to put some load into our shocks and then torque them to the right spec. This is the lower spring seat for the rear springs. You'll notice that there is a place where you will align the springs and a pin under the spring seat to align to the lower control arm. The rear springs have two sides. One side has the spring flattened out and the other side doesn't. The side where it is flattened out is on the top and the other side will be mounted on the lower spring seat like this. This is the spring perch and will be mounted on top of the rear springs. It is also where we can adjust the height of the vehicle. We're gonna do the same thing like the front and apply some bowl shield on the threads to prevent the adjustable collars from locking up. We're also going to be leaving it at its highest setting, similar to the fronts. Locate the alignment hole in the lower control arm and make sure the pin under the lower spring seat is perfectly aligned and seated properly. Raise and secure the lower control arm with the bolt and torque it to 66 foot-pounds plus 90 degrees. After this, you're pretty much done with installing the suspension and the rest is just putting everything back together. Here I am putting some brake clean on the brake disc because there was a lot of oil that were on the brake discs. Now we can just put back the windshield cowl and the wiper blades and we're pretty much done with this whole process. Make sure that you check your manual or service manual about the torque specs because each car may be different. Even with the same generation, different years might use different components. All right, guys, the car is back on the ground. I'm disgusting right now. My garage is disgusting. But first impression, um, the suspension, even though I have it at the highest setting on all four corners, you can see that it is still significantly lower than stock. So the height adjustment in these set of coilovers will affect the preload of the suspension. So I am a little concerned that it's probably going to be a really harsh ride. I'm just going to leave it as it right now. I will make another video. Maybe we'll call it a part two of uh, dialing it in, setting up the correct ride height because right now I don't really care about the right height. It's at the highest setting right now. And for new suspensions, usually it takes a while for the suspension to kind of settle and also take a couple of miles as well. So I'll be driving the car for the next couple of days for the suspension to settle. And then I'll dial the right height and then I'll do an alignment, of course. And then we'll see how it goes from there. Um, it's probably gonna be a really harsh ride. Who knows? We'll see how it goes. I'm super tired. I'm gonna call it a day and until uh, next time, I'll see you guys.